Welcome to my dad's car. Enjoy. Welcome to My Dad's Car, a podcast discussing our personal relationship with automotive nostalgia. And you know what? It doesn't even have to be about your dad's car. It can be your mum's, your grand's, your parents, guardians, or even a neighbour's. If it made an impression, let's talk about it. Um, have you got time to talk about car spotting etiquette? Yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Get your coughs off your chest. Yeah. I've just gobbled down a huge amount of leftover chilli and a jacket potato, so it's sort of... Like an anaconda, I think it's sort of like halfway down my, <laughs> <laughs> down my windpipe. But... Yeah, you ate an anaconda for lunch. <laughs> yeah, you can get anything, can't you, in London? Mm. Yeah, and no, I got it down the local reptile um, butchers. Yeah. <laughs> just a slither, nothing too. Uh... Yeah, <laughs> just a couple of slices off, off the local snake deli. A <laughs> couple of slices of the anaconda and uh, a bit of that peppered python. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Who got any lizard? Uh, all out of lizard. Yeah, no worries, mate. I'll have the cockroach nuggets. <laughs> um, so uh, another thing which has come up of late, really, um, was the etiquette behind the car spotting. Obviously, we run the car spotting tennis on our Instagram and and on TikTok as well. Yeah, and a few of them have been fairly popular. But I was wandering around the other day, just wondering, should we? A should we have some rules, or B are there just some rules of society in general that? Mm. If there's a vehicle parked on a drive, would you share that online or would you consider that out of bounds? So um, that's the topic of discussion, really. Yeah, I think it's definitely out of bounds. Um, I think, yeah, on the street, absolutely fine. But if it's on someone's drive, I guess from a security point of view as well, like it wouldn't be too hard, would it? For Not that we post the locations of where we're shooting from, but um, mm. if, for example, someone sees a spotted of some porsche on someone's drive they might recognize that street yeah from the background or whatever next to a sign written vehicle yeah i don't want to be an accessory in a in a car theft to be honest um no i don't think so i think that's, that's not a good look also I, I think it does just overstep the sort of i think like i said to you before it's a bit like you, you could take a picture of a celebrity couldn't you from a distance but you wouldn't poke your lens through their bathroom window and <laughs> not anymore. Well, I mean, if you're a pap, you might, but no, no, Piers Morgan, maybe in those days, but uh... <laughs> allegedly, allegedly, of course. Yeah. So yeah, I think I'm on the same wavelength. Yeah. If your vehicle's on the road, then um, kind of fair game, isn't it really? Hmm. Um, if the owner's with the vehicle, then, um, then yeah, there's probably some courtesy there with regards to asking them, can you take some photographs? Yeah, yeah. Um, we, we did a podcast recently, didn't we, And about approaching people that had cars that looked kind of just left on their drive. Yeah. And, and one technique was trick-or-treating sort of all year round. Yeah, yeah. That was, it's, not, yeah it's not gone out yet. One with Paul Harding, but um, good opportunity. was. Yeah, that was his technique, wasn't it? Take your child with you. Yeah. Sort of make yourself look as less intimidating as possible. Mm. So around the corner from me, there's a garage, which is just sort of all derelict. I'm pretty sure there's a car in it. I've, I think I know which, which house it belongs to. But yeah, I'm just sort of building up the uh, the courage to go and knock on that. But um, mm. yeah, it won't be a day for dark sunglasses and a baseball cap. It'll be kind of <laughs> sort of look presentable. Yeah. Not like a complete crook. And um, I also, I kind of need to be in a position where if they go, oh, yeah, we're getting rid of that and we want £100 for it, then um, yeah, I probably should have £100. Might have to do some savings first. Otherwise, yeah, I'm going to sort of ruffle the feathers on it. I might just put it in their head that it's a good idea to get rid of it and then someone else could benefit. Yeah. Not that I need another vehicle, especially not one that's been in a garage for years. There was a chap that lived up the road from me. I think he's still there. In fact, I know he's still there, but he had an old um, 5 Series on his drive. Well, I think we're talking sort of first generation five series. Oh, nice. And it had clearly been sitting there for a long time, hadn't moved. Um, it looked like potentially chucked a bucket of water over it occasionally, you know, just to sort of keep it looking less barn finder. Yeah. I had a conversation with him once when I was walking past and uh, it was this old boy and he was sort of saying about, oh, how it all, back in the day it was fantastic. It used to fly and all this. And, and I kind of said to him, yeah, that's probably, you know, worth a few quid now. Um he said, yeah, he regularly gets people knocking on his door. Wanted to buy it. Yeah. 
But then one day, probably a year or two ago, went down the road and it was gone. So, yeah, maybe he did get a few quid for it. Um, he's also got a big sort of mid-90s red Audi as well that he still drives around. Okay. An Audi, maybe a, a, a 90 or a 100. Yeah. I think it's an N plate. It looks pretty good, to be honest. But, yeah, it makes me laugh. He still drives it around. Clearly likes his old stuff. I passed an old boy, actually, on the motorway on the way to the NEC. He had a green Audi 80, mm. uh, sort of the rounded one, just before they brought in the A4. Yeah. And, um, yes, I saw him driving out the car park, actually, on my way out of the show as well. But, um, yeah, he was sort of shirt and blazer kind of tie. Nice. Yeah, that's what this guy's like. Yeah. Um, yeah, white hair. Yeah. I think he said to me, this chap, actually, that his Audi, he said, oh, yeah, it's done over 200,000 miles. Oh, fair, fair play. <laughs> but... That's good to be honest. I guess if you get into the mindset of someone who's, what is he, maybe in his 80s, I guess. Yeah. You consider the vehicles that they grew up with, kind of at the year that he was able to drive, potentially, what, 1950, something like that. Mm. Kind of the vehicles which came out then and then the vehicle he's now driving now, even though it is 25, 30 years old Audi, it's just a light years difference to that. It's modern, yeah. To whatever he was driving around, kind of some sort of sit up and beg. Mm. austin or ford or even kind of an early mini or whatever there's yeah there's a lot of difference there which is which is great and it, well, i think we've mentioned before haven't we we're in a sort of throwaway culture now mm. whereas sort of back in the day it was a case you bought something and you kind of kept it as long as you possibly could and you repaired it and mm -hmm. yeah those sort of vehicles especially the german ones will just go on and on and on yeah absolutely so yeah why not that he might have another i don't know five years or whatever driving is there any point in him going out and buying a, a spaceship of a car? No. Probably not. I suppose not unless, yeah, he's getting clobbered for ULEZ every time he goes out. He will be, yeah. If he's not got a bank account to support that, then, yeah, maybe he'll have to. But if he's only going out once a week, mm. maybe he can stomach it. Yeah, I think so. So so I was out on the on the push bike, actually. I went out for a bit of a ride and um, spotted all manner of stuff. I went down one road and there was... Um, I think I went past an XR3 and then I think there was something else on sort of a low loader. But there was a few guys kind of chatting around on the road opposite. I was like, mm. I'm not going to kind of stop for them. It wasn't the nicest of areas, to be fair. But I think actually, I think if you go into sort of the posh housing estates, it's probably not where mm. the kind of cars we talk about are still going to be. No, There needs to be a little bit of um, kind of financial hardship, I suppose, or just your, your everyday people mm. rather than people who have got money. Because... Um, yeah, the people with loads of money have just gone out and bought new cars. Yeah. But yeah, I went past that. And then there was a Ford Capri as well. And then, yeah, a guy in a van pulled up. I was like, oh, yeah, I'm not going to kind of hang around while he's just sort of eyeballing me. Mm. That would have been a good spot. But um, yeah, I left that. And then I kind of headed off in a different direction. I went past three or four driveways with like old American stuff on. Oh, yeah. But um, I was like, oh, no, I'll, le I'll leave it. I don't know what they were. But yeah, big kind of old american stuff like 50s lead sled sort of thing spotted etiquettes there's no and um i was like i could have sent just kind of a quick pap and just sent it to you just as a look what i've seen yeah but yeah i, I didn't and they're, they're unlikely to be on the road anytime soon but um yeah there's a house that i go past fairly often that's got um on their drive they've got a collection of old like lancia saloons from sort of early to mid 90s Oh, wow. And also they've got a few of those. Um, I think we saw one at the NEC. Um, I think it's a Fiat, like a small two-door. Oh, Strada, wasn't it? Like the... uh, I don't know if it's a Strada. It's a bit later. Sort of like a hot hatch type thing. Yeah, yeah. I think it's a Fiat, isn't it? Um, round headlights. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I don't know if maybe Pininfarina had some involvement with those. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe not, but... Um, They've got like a sort of square back window. Okay. And then the boot goes down. I have to try and find the name of it. Oh, it's a saloon, is it, rather than a hatch? No, no, no. It's, uh, I think it is a saloon, yeah. I don't think it's a hatch. Okay. I have to have a look. But yeah, there's like, like I say, a lot of cars <laughs> mm. just sort of bunged on their drive, all kind of rotting. Yeah, glutton for punishment, I'd have thought, with 70s and 80s Fiat's and Lancia's. They're just oh. going to be, you could just hoover them up. Yeah, yeah. Probably make your house rust, wouldn't they? They're so <laughs> contagious. Yeah. Just leave it, yeah, sort of a rusty orange stain on your driveway. 
Yeah. Yeah. On the plus side, when you're doing your veg for the Sunday roast, you're just go and just pick a panel. Yeah. And exactly. Strain it through that. Yeah. <laughs> yes. But no, there's no sign of the uh the car spotting drying up. There's still so many things out there. And they just crop up out of nowhere sometimes as well, even sort of on your doorstep. It's quite amazing to be honest. Mm. Yeah, it's it is good that those vehicles are still being used, really. Yeah, maybe there is a little bit of a resurgence because if it was made before, what, 1983, you now don't pay mm. tax. You now mm. probably don't have to MOT it, but it's, it's kind of optional. So there, there is kind of an economic reason for doing it. And potentially, I think actually you don't pay ULEZ, do you, if you're, no, if you're over no. 40 years old as well? So I've seen a chap um, recently on sort of the commutes and the school runs. He's driving around. It's, a, it's an old roller from sort of late 70s <laughs> to early 80s okay i say the sort that um sam regularly knocks out in her car dealership not posh spice's dad is it could be yeah <laughs> <laughs> but i've seen him floating around um on the school run i saw him yesterday actually pouring down the rain what rolls royce man yeah and he's just sort of poodling around I, i'm is he listening to dame bowers <laughs> <laughs> i do get the impression though that people like that you know, if they're using a roller that time in the morning on a weekday, there must be a sort of a little bit of, if I can't use my old ULEZ, a non-compliant vehicle, I want to get an old roller and just drive that around instead. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, two fingers. Because just... it's probably one of those, it's only like seven to ten grand's worth, I'd imagine. It's not like a, you know, showstopper. Yeah. And then I suppose, yeah, if you consider the fact that if you were going to keep a non-compliant car, it was going to cost you £12.50 on every journey. Mm. I wonder how many miles you'd have to then do to lose that saving it's true. on a Rolls-Royce. Like, yeah. if you have to fill your roller up and put an extra £12.50 worth of fuel in it every time you drive it, you're then basically even Stevens like, yeah. with regards to that or driving a early noughties saloon or whatever. Yeah. yeah. If you put that twelve fifty a day aside... Each month. Yeah. And then when that big bill does come in a month or two months' time, you've then got a little bit, haven't you, to fall back on. That's, yeah, it's it's robbery, isn't it? You kind of think that's another 250 quid a month or whatever it might be. Mm. Just driving around in your car, just trying to live. And, yeah, when everything's so much more expensive anyway. It's, yeah, I know we've been into this, haven't we, numerous times, but, I mean, it is just a, a tax on the poor, isn't it, basically, if you've... If you can afford to pay it, you can, and you you know different. Yeah, yeah, you're just going to keep doing it, like yeah. So we were talking about car spotting, mm. um, supermarket car parks. You happy with that? Yeah, that's fine. I think I saw a hideous Saab the other day. Actually, I forgot to send you. Um... <laughs> it wasn't the Saab itself; it was what was on it. It was just they'd wrapped it in various things. I'll see if I still got the picture, but um, it was a really rainy day, so I couldn't really film properly. Yeah, shock, raining of late it's uh yeah i think supermarkets is fine isn't it i think anywhere that's kind of in a public car park mm. is fine yeah yeah it does make you kind of wonder when you see this the older car at the side of the road kind of what's the story mm. uh, who's driving that mm. and um yeah why uh, yeah that, uh, have you just happened to catch them on a sunday drive or is that their daily driver mm. we see some vehicles you see sort of round and about and you kind of you could start building up a bit of a picture but then other ones there was that um, Toyota Carina that I photographed mm. um, months and months ago. That's disappeared now. That's not on. The, that's not on the side of the road anymore. So whether it's been scrapped, or, it doesn't really feel like the candidate for a restoration. No, that would be a, a surprise one, wouldn't it? Funny enough, I saw the one, the Carina near me for the first time in a while the other day. Okay, because I sort of thought, oh, maybe that's been uh, taken away, but mm. no, it's still still living, it's still there on the side of the road. Yeah. Maybe we're being followed by some scrap merchants on Instagram and they're just like, oh. Yeah, true. We're just doing the dirty work for them. Yeah. <laughs> so we can get a tie in with them. Yeah. <laughs> Okie dokie. Should we bring this one to a close? Let's do it, yeah. And, um, yeah, another little bonus episode we'll, we'll drop in at some point. And, uh, yeah, thank you very much for listening. Thank you very much, John. Pleasure. Cool. Roll the credits. <laughs> Thank you for listening to my dog's cart. I hope you enjoyed the show. Please support us. Buy a coffee and subscribe. And tell all your friends. <laughs>